What's going on everybody? It's Ozzy from Oz Talks Hardware and today I have my theoretical gaming builds for the month of June. Now as many of you know, I do not like doing theoretical gaming builds. I would much rather do actual gaming builds, but I get a lot of requests from you guys to give you my recommendations for certain budget gaming builds. So today I've decided to do both at least for the month of June. So basically that means that I'm going to be making theoretical builds. I will have four different part lists and I will be building the lowest tier one and the highest tier one. And you guys will be able to see actual real performance of each in the coming few days. So look out for those if you're interested. Before we begin, I do need to say that all of these builds will be using Windows 10 64 bit, but the unactivated version. Thankfully it's completely free. You do not need to pay a dime and you receive 99% of activated Windows 10 functionality. Danny from Nerd on a Budget has a video tutorial explaining how it works and how to do it. Follow that and you should be golden. Without any further ado, let us begin with the theoretical budget builds of June 2017. First up, we have the CPU slash processor. For the first three builds, $350 through $550, we will be using the Pentium G4560, a hyper-threaded dual-core processor from Intel. This is the best type budget CPU on the market right now, and the next best CPU that's worth the upgrade is the R5-1400, which we will use in our $650 gaming PC build. The Pentium goes for $60, and the 1400 goes for $170. Next, we have the motherboard. Yet again, for the first three builds, we will be using the same motherboard, the ASRock B250M HDV. There are cheaper motherboards out there, but they could require BIOS updates for Kaby Lake processors. In order to not complicate things, we will stick with this B250 motherboard that works with Kaby Lake processors out of the box. For the $650 gaming PC, we will be using the cheapest B350 motherboard on the market, the ASRock B350M HDV. No flashy features, but a support overclocking and high-speed memory. The amount of RAM for all four builds will be 8GB of DDR4 memory. The type of RAM really depends on you. I chose a single 8GB stick because it's the cheapest and leaves room for another 8GB stick, but if you want two 4GB sticks, you are more than welcome to do so. 16GB of RAM would be preferred for the $650 build, but DDR4 memory is very expensive right now, so 8 will have to do. Try and buy the highest clock memory you can afford, as memory speed does affect both Ryzen and KB Lake CPUs. Now the video card is where we venture off a little bit. For the $350 build, we will have a 2GB RX460. The VRAM is the only true limitation here, so be mindful if you are picking this one up. I do recommend purchasing a 4GB version over the 2GB version, but I chose a 2GB version to stay within the $350 threshold. For the $450 PC, we have the RX470 4GB. If you can find a 570 that fits the budget, then that works as well. It's a great mid-range 1080p card with nice overclocking potential. The $550 gaming PC will be rocking the RX 580 of the 8GB flavor. Now there will be some bottleneck between this video card and the Pentium CPU, but it's not harsh enough to skip over the 580 altogether. This and the 1060 are the fastest video cards I would pair with the CPU at the moment. Lastly, for the $650 build, we have either the RX 580 8GB or the GTX 1060 6GB. This purely comes down to personal preference. If you will be using FreeSync or play Vulcan heavy titles, then the 580 is the better purchase. If not, then choose the cheaper option or the one that fits your personal preferences the best. None of these builds will have an SSD, though they are capable of utilizing one if you want to add it into the build. The $350 gaming PC uses a 320GB 7200RPM SATA hard drive in order to stay under the budget. All of the other PCs will use 1TB. The case is definitely preferential for each of these builds. As long as you find one that's under $30 and uses USB 3.0 for the $350 through $550 builds, you should be okay. My suggestion for the $350 and $450 machines is the Zion 310 BLK, and for the $550 one, I recommend the Roswell Graham, though you can use the Zion there if you'd like. The $650 machine's case proves preferential as well as long as you stay under $50, but my suggestion is the Fractal Design at $2300. 
Lastly, we have the power supplies. The $350 and $450 builds will use the EVGA 600B, a 600 watt power supply. Neither of them will utilize anywhere close to 600 watts, but the model is $40 right now and it leaves room for a lot of upgrades. The $550 and the $650 builds will have a slightly more reliable semi-modular power supply, the Corsair CXM550. It's about $12 more expensive than the 600B, but the semi-modularity factor alone makes it a worthy purchase. So that's it for this video guys. Like I mentioned earlier, I will be building the $350 version and the $650 version. So check back in about a week if you're interested to see how well those perform. Now, I also mentioned that you can get Windows 10 unactivated for free. You do not have to pay anything if OS price is an issue because I know it's about 80 to like 100 or $120 for that. And that can be used towards something else. But that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, then leave a like. And if you loved it, subscribe because I have more videos like this coming out in the near future. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.